Hi everybody, Martin here again from TTC, joined as usual by Chumley the Wonder Dog and I'm here today to talk to you in our third series on EV Aware and in this one we're going to look at things like regenerative braking, we're going to look at power settings, we're going to look at how you should look after your vehicle before you go anywhere and we're going to look at how they all basically mash together when you're out on the road so that you can get the best range out of your battery. So we're going to be out and about driving so that hopefully you can get a, a good understanding of that. So, what? Can you drive? absolutely no way i still wake up in the middle of the night hearing those pensioners screaming can i drive it's only got little arms Now the car that we're going to be using today is one of these. This is a Peugeot 2008e. Now there's two reasons really why we're using this car. First of all, um, it's kind of a middle of the range kind of electric vehicle. It's not the dearest, it's not the cheapest. So it's a kind of middle of the range one. And the second reason is we haven't got any more budget to use another one. So we've got to use this one. So basically this is the car we're going to be basing it on. now. That saying that though, virtually all electric cars are kind of almost the same in one way, shape or another. So I don't think that anything we're going to talk about will kind of spoil the party, so to speak. Now, a couple of quick safety bits really before you go anywhere in an electric vehicle. The first thing to understand is that you really do need to make sure that your tyre pressures are good. Now, tyre pressure has always been important as far as looking after sort of miles per gallon is concerned. But in an electric vehicle, it's equally as important because what tends to happen is in an EV, they tend to have their batteries very, very low down in the vehicle, which displaces a lot of the weight at, which puts an even pressure on all the tyres. So it's really important that you check your tyre pressures over regularly to make sure that they're good enough. The next thing, is really just understanding what you shouldn't do and shouldn't touch rather underneath the bonnet because there is some stuff under there that can give you a bit of a nasty surprise if you're not careful. Now once you get under the bonnet of the vehicle dead important that you don't touch anything really that's got an orange cable like down there or, or an orange top um, you really won't achieve anything really other than just make a really nice remake of the green mile if you do this so please try and avoid touching anything that's got that sort of orange marker on it now saying that that still shouldn't stop you from filling up things like the windscreen washer fluid and the coolant and things like that but just bear in mind if it's got an orange top on it or it's got an orange marker of any kind whatsoever However, stay away from it. You don't need to be playing with that. Now the first real big change inside an electric vehicle is that they are all automatics. There are no manual gearboxes in electric vehicles, they're all autos. So um, if you're not used to driving an automatic, that can be the first big sort of real big change for you. The next big change realistically in an electric vehicle is that they have a number of power settings. Now this vehicle has three power settings, eco, normal and sport. And I appreciate that in different vehicles they will have different power settings. But to be honest with you, the majority of them will probably only have three four at the absolute maximum and in reality they'll just be called different things but they'll all do the same kind of thing you know so this vehicle like i say has three power settings eco normal and sport normal is it's the one it defaults to when you turn the engine on so technically that's the one you're always going to be driving around in if you don't change it eco gives you more range and later on in this video we'll show you how that basically works out on the road and as far as our power settings are concerned in reality um power or sport this one actually has sport rather not power I apologize if i said power there this one has sport settings only really good two good reasons really why you would want it in sport or power mode the first one of these is if you're towing now this vehicle cannot tow but some electric vehicles can and it's always dead important to check the warranty on your vehicle to make sure that you are allowed to tow in it if you're not then don't fit a tow bar because you'll invalidate your warranty and kiss your insurance goodbye and get yourself into a whole world of hurt the real second reason why you would put it in power mode is if you've got a burning desire to go on a national speed awareness course. Now, as Spider-Man used to say, for all you nerds out there, what Spider-Man used to say is with great power comes great responsibility. And never has this been truer for electric vehicles. They all have something called instantaneous torque, which makes them extremely quick. And it is quite um, addictive, that speed. So you do have to be kind of, you know, mindful of the fact that you have an enormous amount of... Um, the speed underneath the, in, in the vehicle, enormous amount of responsibility to drive it in, 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 in a safe manner. So please do that, you know, but and then to do that, you don't really need it in power mode. So that's the kind of main difference. The other difference is in this vehicle, it, it has something called regenerative braking. 
Now, what is regenerative braking, I hear you say? Well, regenerative braking is the ability realistically to slow the vehicle down and use the inertia from slowing down to top the battery back up. Basically, what happens is, is under braking, the electric motor reverses and becomes a generator, which then helps to top your battery up. That's the simply put. Now, different vehicles will have different grades of settings. Some may have a dial. This particular car has something known as a B mode, yeah, which is brake mode, which realistically speaking is a predetermined dollop of regenerative braking that um, the car manufacturer decided that they wanted to give you. So that's realistically what Regen does. It helps to top the battery up. And again, when we're out and about, we'll show you how that physically works. Now, probably the easiest way that we can really try and get our head around how these different settings all work is just to have a look at how they physically operate on the dashboard when we're moving along. But before we do that, while we're stationary, I just wanted to give you a quick sort of overview of what the kind of things is we're going to be looking at. So, first of all, this car doesn't have a kind of a traditional speedo. It has a big number in the middle. Obviously, you know, your vehicle may have a dial, you know, with a kind of needle and things like that. And, and this vehicle's dashboard is is relatively unique i mean but at the end of the day every one of these electric vehicles they've all got the same kind of information just maybe presented slightly differently but the, the information that i'm going to show you now is going to be the, pretty much the same and pretty much generic to all of them realistically just, but just presented in a different way so first things first the the, the, the one that we are going to talk two that we're going to really focus on are these two really at the sides here so first one of these over here is um is the range now you can see here that this car basically basically says at the moment we've got 133 miles of range and we've got a little indicator down the side there telling us sort of the capacity of the battery. In all honesty, I would take this number here, this 133 as it's reading here, with a bit of a pinch of salt. It is only an indicator of what you've got. I tend to find it's a little bit of a random number generator. It's not necessarily to be a trusted all the time. So it'll give you a rough guide as to what you've got, but don't get completely hung up on how many miles you've got left in there. They're not always that accurate. A far more accurate representation will be to physically look at the actual meter reading itself. And we can see here that we've probably got a roundabout sort of 80% of the battery left in the in, in in its capacity here. So take that as, as, as the reading as to where you want to be and not necessarily this number generator. But we'll look at how the different power settings of the vehicle affect this sort of dial over here in a second. We're also going to have a look at this one as we're driving along and this is the power meter and this is the one that really has all the effect from using things like B mode. Now, as you can see, it's broken down here into three different settings, power, eco, and charge. And um, as we'll see, as we're driving along, the needle will vary according to what we're doing and where we are along the road there. So that's kind of the two that we're gonna be looking at, this one and this one, as we're physically driving down the road. Now, one of the things that you will notice when you're driving your electric vehicle is that they are extremely quiet. They don't really make any great noise at all. They all are supposed to carry something called AVAS, which is an acoustic vehicle alert system. But in my experience, it's not very good of AVAS, realistically. So please bear in mind that when you're driving past schools or you're passing anybody who you would consider to be in a vulnerable road user group, then you just kind of slow down and take that into consideration. The sad truth of driving an electric vehicle is that you are 40% more likely to run somebody over in an electric vehicle than you are driving a petrol or a diesel. So please bear that in mind. They are extremely quiet and not everybody hears them. So in normal drive mode with the B mode turned off, yeah, you can see we're in a 40 mile an hour zone here because that little indicator is telling us we're doing just slightly under that. Yeah, and you can see here that that eco banding is just kind of dropping down into that charge. Now, if I take my foot off the accelerator, it drops down into charge a little bit more. As I start to apply the brake, you can see that it goes up a lot more. I'm not just stopping on a straight road, by the way. I'm actually approaching a roundabout at that point. So as we accelerate away again, we can see that the power goes up 
as it goes up to the um, sort of around the sea of the word eco there yeah and again if I take my foot off the accelerator you will see uh, I'm not braking now I'm just going to take my foot off the accelerator and you'll see a drop down into that charge mode and that is where the regen is physically kicking in now let's put it in B mode you see that D changes to B so let's happen look, look what happens now when I take my foot off the accelerator when it's in B mode remember before that um, indicator only went up about as far as the word letter G on the word charge if I now take my foot off the accelerator now it goes right up the scale so wasn't braking again just merely coming off the accelerator with the B mode turned on and also I want you to this time I want you to watch the speed as well as it drops so I'll take my foot off the accelerator I'm not braking but you can see the regens kicking in and you can see I'm not braking still but look how much we're physically slowing down there so that is how regen braking works it slows the vehicle down and gives you the most um, bang for your bucks out of your regen which obviously then helps to preserve your battery life a little bit more now that regen doesn't really make any difference no matter what power setting you actually have the vehicle in and remember this vehicle has three power settings eco normal which is its default setting and sport mode so let's have a look now at how the diff how these really affect the range of the vehicle now if you look over to the left hand side of the um of the dashboard here you'll see that i've got 135 miles and remember we're taking that number with a little bit of a pinch of salt but nonetheless it's saying we've got 135 miles in there and we're on our normal um default mode so let's see what happens now if i put it into eco mode so i'll just flick the toddle up here and put it into eco mode and you can immediately see that it's telling us that some performance is being compromised and so is some of the thermals in it as well the heating as well but what you can see is we've now gone up to 142 miles now we won't be able to really accelerate away as quickly as we would in normal drive mode in that kind of normal mode but nonetheless for where we are at the moment in a 40 mile an hour zone absolutely ample but we are able now to get 142 miles out of it so that's what happens when you flick from eco up to uh, a data, sorry um, from normal to eco so if we go back to normal drive mode again and remember we're still in b mode here again now because it doesn't make any difference as to how that affects it realistically then we've gone down to 135 miles finally let's see what happens if we put this vehicle in sport mode so if we put the vehicle in sport mode you can now see that the range has now gone down to 129 miles what's now happened though is this vehicle has now become full power if you like so it is extremely quick um and the the acceleration is really really rapid in it now and it's something that you've got to be really mindful of is the fact that just the tiniest blip of the accelerator and before you know it you've 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 jumped from 40 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour in what was hopefully like i say as you can see there a, a matter of seconds there so really really quick so that's in sport mode where range is 128 if we drop back down to normal drive mode our range goes up to 135 and finally if we keep it in eco mode you can see that the range goes up to 141 so in 30 40 mile an hour zones in reality you want it set in this mode in b mode and in eco that will give you the best bang for your bucks out of your range and out of your battery so that's it for today folks we hope you've enjoyed this series on ev aware if you do enjoy anything that we do please do like follow and subscribe to our ttc channel now we're filming this in december so what we'd like to do from chumley and myself we'd like to wish you all a very merry christmas and an extremely prosperous new year we're both out just to take the local residents from the care home out around the corner out on their annual christmas dinner so um oh no get out from behind that steering wheel chumley chumley I'm gonna hit